checking and adjusting the valves on your VW engine is probably one of the most important things that you can do. It's recommended that you do a valve adjustment about every 3,000 miles. So I'm going to show you how I do mine. Let's go. It's really important to be working on a cold engine, so I've set my car up on some ramps the night before, so I'm ready to go. I always use the recommended stock setting of 6 thousandths of an inch, or 0.15 millimeters, when I'm doing a valve adjustment. VW recommended this setting for all valves, because if maintenance got missed, these VW engines were prone to burn valves. Here you can see I'm removing the distributor cap, that's so I can see where the rotor is pointing. Next, I turn the motor over clockwise until the rotor lines up with number 1 HT lead. And the zero degree mark on the crank pulley is lined up with the split in the crankcase. Now that I have the engine lined up at cylinder number 1, I can check the valves. The next step is to remove the rocker cover. So I just take a screwdriver, slip that in behind the baler clip, Remove the rocker cover, and I have access to the valves. Here's the intake valve, and the exhaust valve. You'll notice when I wriggle the rockers, that both of them here are rocking free, and I can hear a little click as I do so. So that tells me that the valves are closed, and we're able to set the tappets. Notice over here on cylinder number two, we've got one valve open and one valve closed. Let me show you on another engine how I check and adjust the valves. Before checking the clearance, it's a good idea to press down on the bottom of the rocker to take out any slack at the push rod. This way you'll get a far more accurate measurement. Taking the correct feeler gauge, six thousandths of an inch, I'm just gently inserting that between the rocker and the valve. But I'm looking for a small amount of resistance that tells me that the gap is correct and it looks like the intake valve on number one is good. But I'm not surprised this engine's been recently tuned up. Let's try the exhaust valve. Now I can feel already that there is some drag on the exhaust valve, so this one's worth adjusting. Also, be sure to hold the feeler gauge nice and straight. Don't bend it off to one side or the other, because it might give you an incorrect reading. It may feel tight, and you may end up adjusting the valve too loose. And just quickly, here's an example of a tappet that's set too loose. There's just simply no resistance, and it flops straight through. So it is too loose. And here's a tight tappet. I'm almost struggling to get the feeler gauge in between the valve and the adjustment screw. Now it's time to adjust a valve. And they're all done in the same way. So we loosen the lock nut on the tappet screw, and then we free up that tappet screw inside the rocker and the nut. So now I'm making a small adjustment outwards on the tappet screw and rechecking that with the feeler gauge. I know the gap is set about right when the feeler gauge starts to feel a little bit magnetic between the valve and the rocker arm. Now that the gap is set, it's time to tighten up the lock nut. And this can be the trickiest part. Because it involves tightening up the lock nut, as well as holding the tappet screw firmly in position. You're almost counter-turning the screw as you're tightening the lock nut. What I like to do as well is take a visual reference of where the slot in the tappet screw is and make sure that it doesn't move as I'm tightening that lock nut. Time to recheck the gap and see whether it stayed the same. So it looks like I got lucky that time. This one's okay. To set the valves on cylinder number two, what we need to do is turn the engine over 180 degrees anti-clockwise, and that means number two will be at top dead center, and then we can look at adjusting those valves. These are set in exactly the same fashion as cylinder number one. We're going to check both the intake and exhaust, and if either of them need adjustment, we'll loosen off those lock nuts and make adjustments accordingly. But I'm going to keep the video short. We'll move on to the next step, having done cylinder number two. It's always a good time now for a new rocker cover gasket. Let's get rid of this old crusty one all dried up eventually it's going to leak all over the heat exchangers. So a bit of brake cleaner and a rag, that's going to clean this up nicely. Taking the new rocker cover gasket, I just rub a little bit of grease into that because cork is porous and will eventually leak oil. Pop that back into our clean rocker cover and whack it back onto the engine.
and lift the baler clip and snap it back into place. Now we can go around and do the other head, which is cylinders number three and four. So the same process applies. I'm going to turn the engine over anti-clockwise 180 degrees until the rotor's pointing at cylinder number three. And then I set the valves for cylinder number three in the same way shown earlier in the video. So it's the same process back here again in the engine bay, 180 degrees anti-clockwise, and then we can set the valves on number four. When I'm finished setting the valves on cylinder number four, it's time for a new rocker cover gasket on that head. And then of course we put the distributor cap back on. And it's a good idea to stick a timing light on at this point and make sure that the timing hasn't been too drastically altered thanks to the valve adjustment. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I really enjoy putting these videos together for you. If you'd like to do me a solid, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one.